Welcome to another heat conduction in a rod example. So in this example, a 40 centimeter rod has one end held at zero degrees and the other end insulated. Uh, let X be the position along the rod measured in centimeters from the zero degree end. And suppose the initial temperature in the rod is given by F of X equals X for X between zero and 40. Let's suppose A equals five and find the equation for the temperature in the rod at position X and time T seconds. So again, just going through and identifying the information, we have a 40 centimeter rod. So that means we are working with L equal to 40. We have one end held at zero, the other end insulated. Uh, and X is measuring from the zero degree end. So we have one end held at zero. We have U of zero T is equal to zero. The other end insulated means we are looking at the case where uh, the partial with respect to X at LT, or in this case, 40 T is equal to zero. Uh, we have A equals five. So our differential equation is the first partial with respect to T is equal to five squared times the second partial with respect to X of U. And then we have the U of uh, X zero is X. So anytime we have the mixed uh, boundaries. With uh, u of zero t equaling zero, this means that we are in our sort of Fourier mix or a mixed Fourier sign case. So that means that the case we are looking at is that u of xt is equal to the sum from n equals one to infinity of c sub n times e to the negative a times two n minus one times pi over two l whole thing squared times t times sine of 2n minus 1 pi over 2l x. Uh, and then our c sub n is 2 over l times a definite integral from 0 to l of f of x times sine of 2n minus 1 pi over 2LX dx. So going ahead and plugging in our L, A, and F of X. So plugging in L equals 40, A equals 5, and F of X equals X, we get u of xt is equal to the sum from n equals one to infinity of c sub n e to the negative five times two n minus one times pi all over two times 40 is 80 whole thing squared times t. And then we have times sine of two n minus one times pi over 80 x. Uh, once again, our c sub n's, we have two over l, so two over 40 times a definite interval from zero to 40 of f of x is just x times sine of two n minus one pi over 80 x dx.
At this point, it essentially just remains to solve for C sub n. So we will do some integration by parts. If we set u to be x and dv to be sine of 2n minus 1 pi over 80 times x. Differentiating, uh, going down our u column, we'd go to 1 and then 0. Integrating down the dv column, we would have a negative 80 over 2n minus 1 pi times cosine of 2n minus 1 pi over 80x. Integrating again, we would have a negative 80 over 2n minus 1 pi entire fraction squared sine of 2n minus 1 pi over 80x. Taking the positive product on the first diagonal, negative product on the second diagonal, we have our c sub n is equal to 2 over 40 or 1 over 20 times uh, negative 80 over 2n minus 1 pi times x times cosine of 2n minus 1 pi over 80 x. And then we have plus an 80 over 2n minus 1 times pi entire fraction squared sine of 2n minus 1 pi over 80x. And again, we are evaluating this at uh, 0 and 40. So this becomes 1 over 20 times negative 80 over 2n minus 1 pi times 40 times cosine of 2n minus 1 pi over 2 plus uh, 80 over 2n minus 1 times pi entire fraction squared times sine of 2n minus 1 pi over 2. And then we subtract off the zero component. Subtracting off the zero component, we have minus plugging into zero in zero into that first component. We are looking at negative 80 over 2n minus 1 pi times zero times cosine of zero. And then uh, still inside the parentheses from subtraction, we have plus and 80 over 2n minus 1 times pi, full fraction squared times sine of 0. So running through both of those pieces from x equals 0 head to 0. Uh, so the first, both pieces from the subtracting off from 0 head to 0. So we are just left with our uh, cosine 2n minus 1 pi over 2 term and sine 2n minus 1 pi over 2 term. These are precisely the odd multiples of pi over 2. So the cosine term goes to 0, since cosine of an odd multiple of pi over 2 is 0. The sine term, we wind up going to negative 1 raised to a power, and it winds up being just n plus 1. So our sine of 2n minus 1 pi over 2 goes to negative 1 to the n plus 1. So that is the only term we are left with. Uh, we wind up getting, therefore, uh, that our c sub n are equal to negative 1 raised to the n plus 1 uh, times uh, 1 over 20 times negative 80 over 2n minus 1 pi times 40. So that becomes times uh, negative uh, 160 
over, sorry, that's the wrong term I wanna be looking at. We have our negative one to the n plus one and then times one over 20 times 80 over two n minus one times pi in the denominator whole fraction squared. We could rewrite this as negative one to the n plus one times uh, one of those 80s is canceling out 20. We'd just be left with four times 80. So we would have times 320 over two n minus one squared pi squared. So we wind up getting our final solution. is u of xt is equal to the sum from n equals one to infinity of negative one to the n plus one times 320 over two n minus one squared pi squared times e to the negative five times two n minus one times pi over 80 whole thing squared times t, and then times sine of 2n minus 1 times pi over 80x. Uh, so this is, again, how we can go about figuring out. First, you need to translate to which situation we're in, then plug in the formula, and then most of the work is simply solving for our c sub n's.